You didn't have any plans over the holiday period, did you? 0811 brings more content than Santa could possibly ever squeeze down your chimney with, so let's take a look. Paul on the bowl and kids he is my darling. Paul on the bowl and the bowl and call. There's a whole load of interrelated things going on in Update 0811, and I think the best place to start is with Snowflakes. If you've been playing the game for a while, you'll know how this works. Each ship in your port at the start of 0811 will have a Snowflake symbol on it. The first win in that ship knocks the Snowflake off and gives you a prize. It's once per ship for the whole update, so you'll benefit from having lots of ships in your port. Ships acquired during the update will also get a flake if this update works the same way as previous ones. Don't forget, wins can be farmed in co-op. Tier 10 wins will get you a standard sized Santa's Gifts container, more about those later. Tier 8 and 9 wins uh, will get you 75 steel per ship. Tiers 5, 6 and 7 wins will get you between 400 and 750 coal per ship. This update comes with a series of daily login bonuses. These include some more Santa crates, uh, doubloons, camos, premium time, etc. There are also some shipbuilding containers, more about them shortly, and each of the 14 login bonuses includes some shipbuilding tokens, more about them later too. See, I said it was all interrelated, didn't I? Uh, note that in order to get Puerto Rico for free, yes, more about that later as well, you'll likely need all 14 login prizes. I just mentioned shipbuilding containers. These actually have nothing to do with building Puerto Rico. They're related to a new time-limited collection about the construction of World War II era warships. This five-part, 20-piece collection will reward you with five days of premium and a big Santa-sized, a uh, big-sized Santa container for completion. Note that collection items will only drop from the dedicated containers, so you can't complete this collection with daily containers, but you can get quite a few of these crates during the update. Update 0811 comes with a set of seven directives which will be spread out over this apparently five-week update. Again, the prizes for missions completion are numerous and closely linked to the other content in this update. Most notably, the prize for completing the third of seven directives is Tier 7 Premium Italian SAP Cruiser Gorizia. It's a Zara with hydro instead of torpedoes. You can also get steel, coal, port slots, Santa crates, and linkable Tier 8 permanent camouflage, and critically, 1,950 shipbuilding tokens, which you'll need to complete building of Puerto Rico, which I'll get to shortly. Once you've unlocked Gorizia, you'll be able to complete four mission chains which require Gorizia for the first stage. These chains give even more shipbuilding containers to help with your collection, and also tech tree ships Furious, Ismail, Gepard, and Trento. If you have these already, you'll get credit compensation, but you'll still get the commander and the port slot. Starting on Monday the 16th of January, you'll be able to begin construction on the last potentially free ship of this update, and that's American super heavy cruiser Puerto Rico. Think of it as an Alaska with an extra turret. It is possible to complete Puerto Rico for free during the update, but it's going to require you to play regularly, get all the login bonuses, and complete all the missions early. Why? Well, the construction takes place in real time, even when you're not logged in, and can be sped up by buying boosters. If you don't apply enough boosters early enough, you won't finish before the deadline of the 13th of January. Boosters are available for doubloons, and if you don't finish in time, you'll be able to complete construction for doubloons too once you get to the halfway point, though I expect that route to be quite expensive, it is a tier 10 ship after all. It's the free boosters that you'll need shipbuilding tokens for, as many as you can get your hands on. Boosting construction immediately adds to the progress, but also speeds up the overall construction rate. The first booster is available for free, so be sure to log in and activate it even if you don't have time to play right away. The construction animation is really nicely made, showing the ship being laid down in six stages, totaling 36 phases, completing each of which will get you a small reward. These include premium time, various gift containers, coal and steel. 
If you complete construction, you'll have a Puerto Rico with a 10 point captain and a very, very American permanent camo which shows the crew on the deck while you're in port. As in previous years, there will be Santa's gift containers available for those who live in countries where they are legal. Sorry, Belgium. Uh, the containers can drop various items, most notably one of 86 premium ships. Included in the list are many ships you can't currently get anywhere else. Missouri, Kutuzov, Imperator Nikolai and Belfast, for example. If a Santa crate rolls you a ship you already have, you'll receive a soup container instead, which will drop a different ship from the list. And this is the reason it's so important not to sell low tier premiums you don't want. If you already have it, you can't roll it again, so hang on to the rubbish ones, they'll help you get the good ones. The crates come in three sizes, standard, big and mega. The prizes are better in the larger crates and the chance of a ship drop is highest in the mega crates. There are two free Santa crates for you in the armory, another two already waiting in the port for you to open. You can buy more in the armory and the premium shop. Now, I say this every time we talk about loot crates, but don't spend money you don't have. It's not worth losing your house and starving to death over what is essentially an Iowa with slightly increased credit potential. I highly recommend that you set a budget and stick to it if you think you might get carried away. That being said, Santa crates make a great gift for friends and clanmates. Our clan usually runs some kind of competition over Christmas uh, with crates as the prizes, for example. Don't forget that you can only gift things to accounts in the same server region as your account. A new section is being added to the account menu, Captain's Logbook. It will let you see your progress in collecting ships, commanders, patches, flags and, and lots more. If you're a collector you should find this section very useful as it will let you see which items you do not yet have. Three cross-server clan brawl days are included in 0811, 21st of December 9v9 at tier 5, 28th of December 4v4 at tier 8 and 4th of January 12v12 at tier 10. Four five-hour cross-server time slots are available to choose from. There is also a ranked sprint season from the 27th of December to the 3rd of January, but it's a bit of an unusual one. Uh, this season will be 1 versus 1 at tier 8 on small maps modified uh, with domination mode. Uh, are you always complaining about poor teams every single game? Well, now you are the team and your success or failure is entirely in your hands as you try to choose a ship which can deal with any other ship it might come up against. Carriers are included by the way and I can't wait to see what everyone brings to the table. A couple of other little notes, uh, most people were expecting there to be a grind to get the new legendary German commander Gunther Lutjens, but I think Wargaming wanted to avoid yet another grind this update so they've simply introduced him to the armory for 175,000 coal. He has four different skills, each suited to a different class, making him a fairly flexible captain. In the balance changes, Hosho is being slightly nerfed by making the torpedo aiming more difficult. Midway is being buffed by slightly increasing torpedo damage. Salem's radar is being buffed to 40 seconds from a duration of 25. And German battleships are getting slightly improved dispersion. Their dispersion will now be the same as British and American battleships, but don't forget their Sigma is still a little worse, so don't expect North Carolina accuracy from your Bismarck. Still, it should be a welcome improvement to the comfort of playing those ships. While nothing to do with update 0811, I thought I'd add that Wargaming have announced that there will be a third round of submarine testing on a separate server again, with some significant differences. Uh, light cruisers will now have depth charges, subs will only operate below the water, with the oxygen mechanic being replaced by a battery charge mechanic. The way hydroacoustics work will also be significantly changed. Watch the dev blog and the news portal for more details soon, and of course, catch me on Twitter to see me testing the subs live when the test goes live. Well, that's it for me uh, from this seasonal update. Uh, the patch will go live on uh, NA and CIS on Wednesday and on EU and C on Thursday this week. Uh, if you like this Focorn, please share it with your friends and your clanmates. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe and ring the bell for updates, that would be a great Christmas present for me. And you can also simply like and leave a comment. Find me every Friday and most Saturdays on Twitch and look out for a special couple of seasonal streams coming. More details coming soon. Take care of each other, have a great break, and I'll see you soon.